It's called general average, and what it means basically is that anyone who has cargo stuck out on that ship is now partially responsible for the cost to dig her out. Crews tried for a second day in a row yesterday and for the second day in a row failed to make any progress moving the ever forward out of the mud. Today, the U.S. Coast Guard announced they have approved a new plan to refloat the massive cargo ship that's been stuck for almost three weeks after missing a turn in the shipping channel. The new plan is to dredge down 42 feet and then attach the ship to two huge barges using cranes and more tugboats to pull her out. Sal Mercogliano is a professor of maritime history and produces a YouTube show about the shipping industry. They really want to avoid trying to get containers off this vessel because that is a huge, laborious, expensive process. If it doesn't work on Wednesday, they're going to keep trying. They're going to keep dredging and uh, eventually they will dredge her free. There, there, there's always, she will eventually, she's not going to become a permanent mooring out there. As an indication of just how big a job it's going to be to remove the ship, the company that owns the ship today invoked a maritime law declaring what's called general average, which means anyone who has cargo on that ship will now be responsible for a portion of the cost to rescue her. If you are shipping goods on that vessel and you don't have insurance for, for it, you may become liable for additional handling costs, transportation costs, you, which you would have to pay or bond the cargo out before you can receive it. Now, it's too early in the process to know just how much that cost may come to for people. The plan now is to continue dredging for the next several days. And then on Wednesday, they'll bring in more barges and more tug ships and try to pull it out once again. That's wow. the very latest here on the Chesapeake Bay. Back to you guys. And Mark, this general average clause, it sounds sort of like the fine print that you read in a contract. So what does that mean for somebody like... You know, that woman, for instance, that you interviewed the other day and she's moving in from overseas and all of her stuff, everything that belongs in her apartment is on that ship. What does that mean for somebody like her? Yeah, for anybody, it's just, it's not good news. It'll mean if they if they have insurance, then the cost of it will be covered and, and they should be okay. And I reached out to Tracy Alloway. I've not heard back, but given that she's a financial reporter who covers the shipping industry, I'm betting that she did have insurance and that most of the people do have insurance for their cargo on that ship. But if they don't, then this could be tied up. Their goods could be tied up for years in litigation mm. because when this has happened in the past, it has always led to lawsuits because they try to determine and who is actually responsible for running this ship aground. And I want to point our camera because we're having a, a very lucky moment here. There's another ship. They've opened up the shipping lanes and there's another ship passing by. And this will finally give you a perspective of just how close the Ever Forward was to making the, the turn and how close it is to the shipping lane. You see this auto carrier who's coming through here right now in our shot. And so it gives you a real good perspective of just how close the Ever Forward is to this very vital shipping channel. That's the very latest yeah. here. Back to you guys. So wow. close yet so far. Mark C. Graves, thank you.